in Unit 3, Lecture 2, Part 4, we're going to continue on with looking at the role of resisting innate immunity defenses play in enabling bacteria to better colonize the body. In the previous soft chalk lesson, we looked at how bacteria can resist phagocytic engulfment, as well as antibacterial peptides, parts of innate immunity. And in this soft chalk lesson, we're going to look at the ability to resist phagocytic destruction once they are engulfed. So again, there's your uh, bullet points for this soft chalk lesson and your objectives you need to know for the unit three exam. So again, uh, this is still part of the topic of virulence factors that promote bacterial colonization of the host. Remember when bacteria colonize the host, they're establishing themselves in the host. And we've looked now at five factors that promote colonization. Uh, we're continuing on with number five here. Last time again, we looked at how bacteria can resist phagocytic engulfment and also how they can resist antibacterial peptides, all part of innate immunity. And continuing on with resisting innate immunity, to, in this lesson, we're going to look at the ability to resist phagocytic destruction. And there's a wide variety of ways they can do this. One of the reasons we went through all the steps in phagocytosis earlier in this section is so you can understand how bacteria can resist the different steps in phagocytosis. And one way they can resist phagocytic destruction is they can prevent fusion of the lysosome, the membrane-bound sac that contains the killing chemicals with the phagosome, the membrane-bound sac containing the engulfed organism. So for example, salmonella, once it's engulfed by macrophages and put in a phagosome, uses a type three secretion system to inject proteins uh, into the cytoplasm of the macrophage that prevents the lysosomes from fusing with the phagosomes. And that provides a safe haven within the phagocyte for the salmonella to replicate and be protected from antibodies and other defense elements. Uh, this is the illustration we showed you of that, where the type 3 secretion system here from the bacteria inside the phagosome of the macrophage is secreting proteins that are going to prevent the lysosome containing the killing chemicals from fusing with the phagosome containing the bacteria. And we also see that in this animation. So again, some bacteria can produce molecules, typically with a secretion system, that prevent the lysosome from ever fusing with the phagosome. And as a result, the killing chemicals are never dumped on the bacteria and the phagocyte is now a safe haven for bacterial replication. Uh, Legionella pneumophilus that causes Legionnaire's disease also uses the secretion system uh, to inject effector proteins to prevent lysosomes and phagosomes from fusing. Uh, likewise, Neisseria gonorrhoeae produces poor proteins that prevent phagosomes from fusing. Cell wall lipids of Mycobacterium tuberculosis arrest the maturation of the phagosome and prevents the delivery of uh, the lysosomes. And then a few bacteria like Salmonella, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, Legionella pneumophilus, Chlamydia trachomatis, can also block the vesicular transport machinery that enables the lysosome to move to the phagosome. So one way they can resist destruction is preventing the lysosome from fusing with the phagosome, like we saw in this animation. But some of them can also uh, produce molecules that prevent the lysosome from ever reaching the phagosome, typically by interfering with the cytoskeleton along which the lysosome moves in order to fuse with the phagosome as we see here. So sometimes they produce molecules that interfere with the transport machinery within the cell that allows the lysosome to get to the phagosome to fuse. And again, if the lysosome never fuses with the phagosome, the bacteria have a safe haven for replication. So that's one way in which bacteria can resist destruction, preventing one way or another the fusion of the lysosome with the phagosome. Now, another way is that some bacteria actually escape from the phagosome before the lysosome ever fuses. 
uh, Shigella flexneri that causes dysentery, Listeria monocytogenes that causes foodborne infections, Rocky Mountain spotted fever rickettsia. These bacteria escape from the phagosome into the cytoplasm prior to the phagosome and the lysosome fusing, as we see in this animation. As we see, some bacteria escape from the phagosome, and by the time the lysosome gets there, the bacteria are out in the cytoplasm replicating. The third way they can resist phagocytic destruction is by preventing acidification of the phagosome. We learned that once the bacterium is engulfed, that a proton pump pumps protons or hydrogen ions into the phagosome, making it acidic because it requires acidic pH for the lysosomal enzymes, the acid hydrolases, to effectively kill the bacteria. But some bacteria prevent acidification of the phagosome, so once the lysosome and the phagosome fuse, it's the wrong pH, and the acid hydrolases are not effective in killing the microorganisms. And we see that a couple of bacteria do that would be Mycobacterium tuberculosis and Legionella pneumophila. So if we take a look at this animation, here we see a bacterium entering by enhanced attachment with IgG or opsonization. It's engulfed and placed in a phagosome. Now at that point, remember, a proton pump is supposed to pump protons into the phagosome because right now the phagosome has a neutral pH, but the acid hydrolases in the lysosome require an acid pH to be active and to break down the cellular proteins of the bacterium. So normally protons or hydrogen ions are pumped into the phagosome making it acidic. But some bacteria can interfere with the proton pump so the protons are not pumped into the phagosome. So the phagosome remains neutral when the digestive chemicals are dumped on the bacteria, it's the wrong pH and the bacteria are not very effectively killed. So that allows them to actually resist killing by the acid hydrolases within the lysosome. A fourth way bacteria can resist phagocytic destruction, some are more resistant to killing by the lysosomal chemicals themselves. Salmonella is more resistant to the toxic forms of oxygen that we use uh, to kill microorganisms are also more resistant to the antibacterial peptides that offensins. And then the carotenoid pigments of Staphylococcus aureus, this is the pigment that gives staph its golden color when it grows on agar. Uh, Staphylococcus aureus, aureus means golden because it produces a gold water and soluble pigment. But that pigment is actually a virulence factor. It protects the bacteria or shields it from the toxic oxidants that the neutrophils use to kill bacteria. We'll see later on that by producing toxic oxidants, that's one of the major ways our white blood cells are able to kill bacteria. And so the carotenoid pigments of Staph aureus, the, the give it its gold pigment, shield it from toxic oxygen. And the group B strep um, that often colonize healthy adult women, uh, but can serve as a source of infection uh, of newborns during delivery uh, also produces a carotenoid pigment that's orange in color and that shields the bacterium also from toxic oxidants. So some bacteria are more resistant to the actual killing materials that the leukocytes are producing within their lysosomes. And another way they can resist phagocytic destruction is actually killing the phagocyte. So some bacteria kill phagocytes. Two classic examples there, Staphylococcus aureus, that causes a lot of accidental post-operative wound infections. Streptococcus pyogenes, that causes strep throat. Both of these produce an exotoxin called leukocytin because it kills cytal leukocytes, white blood cells, by damaging either the cytoplasmic membrane or the lysosomal membrane. So these bacteria actually secrete toxins that kill white blood cells. And these are often called pyogenic or pus producing bacteria because they do kill white blood cells with leukocytin. And we see that in this animation here where the streptococcus 
is releasing leukocytin, which is damaging the cytoplasmic membrane of the phagocyte, killing it. And then both Shigella and Salmonella induce macrophage apoptosis, a program cell suicide. So when these bacteria are engulfed, they uh, trigger the cell suicide pathway of the macrophage, and the macrophage uh, undergoes programmed cell death. So again, they wind up killing the phagocyte. So those are ways bacteria can resist phagocytic destruction once they're engulfed. And there's our self-quiz at the end of that soft chop lesson.